Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about leak repair on a condenser coil. Um, I've had a lot of guys over the years drive screws into coils. Um, you know, if they've, they've done something with their screwdriver and they slip and then the screwdriver punctures the tube on the inside of the coil. And sometimes it's just a very small hairline fracture or maybe there's a, a with a copper starting to break down. And you know what, and there's ways of doing it. Now one of the ways to do it is with the Smart Seal Quick Shot. Um, this is, comes with a quarter inch uh, SAE and a 5 16 adapter is included. Uh, it's a three in one with UV dye and cool enhancer. And it also will, uh, it's a high performance leak stop. This, this right here will treat up to six tons. And so this is one way to do it. If you have a very, very small leak and you're like, man, I, I, can, I can barely hear it. Or maybe you just can't hear it at all, but you can find it with soap bubbles and it's just a very small leak and you want to, don't really want to dig into the coil, then check out the Smart Seal from QuickShot. But let's say that uh, you're doing a PM, you're doing a maintenance, and you're like, you're putting the screws back on the unit with your, uh, your impact gun, and then you slip and you drive a screw right into the tube. Now there's a way to fix that. Today we're going to be using the ASCO torch, uh, the acetylene uh, torch. Uh, tip here from uh, ASCO. You can get this at True Tech Tools. Uh, this is a number three tip. I think you guys are going to like it. One of the things that I do is, is I'll I'll take the um, I'll take the torch itself and I'll heat up the area and I'll remove the aluminum fin. Now this aluminum fin is very compact. It's going to be a little difficult. So we're going to go ahead and let's, let's remove some of that aluminum fin. So we're going to heat this up. We're going to remove this aluminum fin here. We're going to try to push it aside um, to expose the copper. You can start to see where the copper is being exposed. Now you've got a lot of the copper is really exposed. You can see it was very fast. You're not damaging a lot. You've created a small opening right here. Go ahead and set this off. You can see that number three tip, it really exposed a lot of that copper. And I'm going to move that, that coil, this coil back right here. And all I've been using is just a screwdriver. Um, and now we've got this copper. You can see it exposed right there. Um, I didn't damage this all up. I didn't get inside with a pair of needle nose pliers and twist this out. Um, it works out really well just using uh, a screwdriver. And uh, now I've got this copper, this copper tubing now exposed. And you can probably see maybe in there, this was a leak. You can be able to see that, that crack that would have been right there. Now to, for today, um, you guys know, and I'm a huge fan of it, I'm going to be using the, uh, the Sil Saw 15. This is a 15% silver solder round rod from the guys over at Solder Weld, and you can check them out at www.solderweld.com. So we're going to go ahead and hit, heat this guy back up again. Again, oxygen style flame, oxygen settling style flame. We're going to go in here and heat up this copper tube. Remember, it's already been heated up because you were burning away the aluminum. There's a lot of coil faces here, so you really have to heat up that tubing. Because remember, the aluminum is also absorbing the heat. The length of the copper tube is absorbing the heat. And you can get that wrapped around here. It doesn't look that pretty, I know. 
Try to get that around a little bit. But the key, you know, is to really get that silver solder in there so that you can get that heat. There you go. You can use a little more silver, I think we're good to go. And then you're pretty much done. Now, the one thing to remember is you're pretty much done is that there's a lot of heat. You have to really know that when you're heating this up, this coil is just absorbing that heat. And so here you've gone ahead, I've got the silver solder in there. There's a little bit of a drip on there, but you know what, it's, the big thing is, is we got that leak fixed. A lot of times then what I'll do is I'll take, I'll cool this area down, and now I've got a hole. Now the hole's not that big, honestly. You're not gonna lose any cooling efficiency out of it. It's not, you know, the condenser fan motor's not gonna come on, it's all gonna pull through here. But if you really, really feel like that you need for it, I'll take silicone, I'll put the back side right here, and I'll put duct tape on the back side of the coil, and I'll fill this in right here with, um, with silicone, and I'll fill in that gap after I've leak pressured, I leak checked it, and for the most part, I'm 100% ready to go. Now, one of the ways, one of the ways that you can take a leak check is using the big blue on the uh, brush on, which is the micro leak uh, detector. And you can get this in here, you can unscrew this, you can get this dauber, and you can daub this in there and find those leaks, those very small leaks. And the big blue, the brush on, with the micro leak uh, detector is perfect for these small, small leaks. And so that's, this is one way that I go out, when I go out in the field and one of my techs is driven a screw into a coil, this is one way that uh, I work with them and train them and show them how to fix a, a leak. Because a lot of times guys are afraid to get into a coil, they're afraid to heat up the aluminum, they don't know that they can do it, but this is one way that I can do it. So again, uh, this is one way to take care of the condenser coil using the ASCO torches, using the, uh, the uh, big blue brush on micro uh, leak uh, micro leak leak detector as well as the 15 percent round rod from the guys and gals over at solder weld so uh, as always work safe be safe be good humans we'll see you next time